I honestly think heroin is the only physical addiction. You know, fuck it, dude. I bought fucking, like, the first lockdown, I bought syringes. And I was like, dude, I'm just going to fucking, yeah, just do myself in. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official .com. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Street Culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast for your sins. Uh, good morning. Um, reporting live from South London. South. Uh, click on now. You can see us. You can see we're in a beautiful, harmonious um, retreat. Creative retreat in South London. Reach out to graffitikings.co.uk. Um, I'm with a previous guest slash icon in the graffiti street art world. Oh, yeah. Ein's inside the house. What are we saying? Boom. Welcome to Millwall. <laughs> give, give me some skin that. <laughs> That's how we roll now. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly Millwall. We are South Bermondsey, man. That's... Dude, I cannot yeah. wait for fucking... Oh, okay. <laughs> I cannot wait for football to open. Are you a football fan? No, I hate football. <laughs> but I love Stone Island. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the classic attire for the, the, the football. Dude, movie like, football. like, when I was a kid, like, only hooligans wore Stone Island. Mm, mm. So when I first moved to Hackney when I was, like, 16, yeah. Drax used to hook me up with Stone Island mm. and no one would mess with you. Would not you be had, touched. Yeah, you would not be touched. And now every little ragger and drum and bass kid yeah. is wearing Stone Island. So now, you can't wear Stone Island because you're going to get robbed. <laughs> Especially around wrong, here. <laughs> the people that used to wear Stone Island are now looking for people that are wearing Stone Island. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's gone, isn't it? Yeah. What's the world coming to, 2021? Dude, it's, it's swings and roundabouts. Yeah. You, 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 arguably the same with Graf, isn't it? it it's, it's gone full cycle where it's okay. Not okay. We can always inject some uh, some hardcore, but but do you know what I mean? It's like re uh, uh, reinventing itself, but in the opposite to what it used to be. Graffiti will always make something uglier and better uh. that they can't buff. So like we used to tag fuck we used to tag train doors and then they worked out how to clean it. And then we invented leather dye. So we'd get marker pens and put leather dye in it and it would stain. And then they put this thing on the fucking doors where you couldn't you, where they'd buff it. Yeah, yeah. And then we got like Dremel etch things and scratch the windows and then we found window etch. Mm -hmm. So it's like, no matter how hard you try to buff graffiti, yeah. we will come back with something harder yeah. and uglier with more drips that you can't buff. <laughs> <laughs> graffiti yeah. is here for life. It is, it is. And, and the sooner people... People recognise that it's weird. It's going through this weird transition where it's 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 in in some ways it's socially acceptable, but in other ways it's so fucking frowned upon. And it's it's this sweet spot that's. That, that people Dude, question. I like I like my girlfriend lives in fucking Red Hill, Rygate, right? Mm. So it's like half hour out of London Bridge, mm. and the only interesting thing on that boring train journey every day is like a new eggs thing or a new thing. Mm -hmm. Like, my train journey is boring mm. unless I'm reading the Metro. Like, my tra the only interesting thing about your train journey is graffiti. And it's like, why are you trying to stop this? Mm. Like, this is interesting. Yeah, I feel you. Uh, it's, I mean, that's what I would get. I get up in the morning and go on the train for, for sure. <laughs> that's weird. That's Dude, what like, I literally, I look out the train window and I'm like, mm. 
waiting for a fuck, waiting for a tag to roll past mm -hmm. or a, yeah, or a piece. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, graffiti is interesting. It's not boring. Yeah. Dude, these are young, interesting people doing, risking their lives, doing something interesting. Yeah, that's right. And it becomes more prevalent when you see something on a, on a train or on a trackside done to such a high level. You, all of a sudden it dawns on you like, yo, it's more about the movements prior to that. That's the art as much as the... Dude, you've got to work out how to get there. Yeah. You've got to rack your pain or buy your pain. And then you've got to go there. Yeah. And then you're going to get traced by fucking clays. Yeah. And the train's going to come and you've got to hide. Yeah. Dude, graffiti's hard work. Yeah. And so going back to the Stone Island, I mean, this would became a bit of an analogy, but, but it, it's all in the same vein. Do you think, do you think it would ever go back? To, would Stone Island go back to a more hardcore situation? Is it that, is it that Graf is just on a direct course to, it's okay to be a graphire, it's okay to spray paint walls, it's okay, I mean, it, do you think that's like an end result to the persistence of the decades of Graf becoming what it is thus far? There's a group of people that went to college and studied graphic design and they reinterpretate graffiti and they make art in that way and none of them have got a fucking clue of the the bushes you've fucking slept in mm. the weed you've smoked the time you've spent like none of them have got a clue and and then there's the people that just wear it. That's Be BTP giving us <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tom. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to get it? You can get it, Phil. No, it's not That's my gone. phone. It's gone, get out yeah. of here. Um, so, no, it, it, you know, it's, it's the, their cultures and, you know, a culture exists in a moment in time mm. and, like... When, like, hooligans were wearing Stone Island. Mm. And it was like, you've got that badge. You can't fuck with me. Mm. And then when graffiti writers robbed people, like TU and, like, those people. Mm. Like, and graffiti was hard. Hard. And it still is. I mean, this, you know. But I know what you mean. There was, it, and this is only by my journey through the podcast, you know, writers, gangs like TU, you just didn't, did not fuck with <laughs> yeah. on any level. Dude, like PFB, like yeah. fucking WD. Yeah. Like, gnarly. Those people were like hooligans that hit people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, dude, you don't go over WD because they will yeah. bang you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And now it's like, everyone's like, whatever. The only crew that's fucking doing anything at the moment is fucking GSE. <laughs> yeah. Because they don't care. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's in its essence, what, what it's all about. Yeah. Fuck you, I don't care. Do you think, um... Yes, you're a really good person to ask this. Do you think street art took the style away from Graf? And I say that in a, in, in a broad sense because I feel like, well, you can't be stylistically great. You, in a lot of cases, it's deemed street art if it goes outside of the... If it goes into abstract or it takes away from the, the graph format. So I did this show in Los Angeles. Uh, Jeffrey Deitch, Roger Gassman and Aaron Rose did a show in the LA Mocha. Mm. And it was called Art in the Streets. And everybody in that show that wasn't dead had been arrested with free. Really? Literally everybody. Wow. I'm like, and I do this interview and I'm like, 
Dude, we've all been necked for yeah. fucking graffiti. Yeah. And that's what graffiti is about. Yeah. Dude, you get a can of paint, you go out, you tag something, mm. you get necked, and you either give up or you go, yeah, fuck it, I'm doing mm. this. Mm. This is my job. Yeah. This is what I becomes, love. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it becomes. So, like, you, you got on the bus, right? Yeah. I'm 50. <laughs> And we're smashing shit. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is a, this is a this is a segue into some interesting stuff. Like you you are, regardless of what where you're exhibiting, you are you are mix master. <laughs> like you are like doing it everywhere. You're not just street art. You're street bombing. You're not just. You're all elements of graph at the moment. And just being coming down on Old Kent Road, I'm like, this is this is this is brazen. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so I got into this through graffiti and all the nonsense that I do around here. Like, I make money, street art, whatever. But to me, it's about graffiti. And graffiti is about one thing, getting up. Like, your name doesn't matter whether it's good, shit, but your name repeatedly, as you're getting on the bus, just iron, 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 iron. And that's graffiti. It's getting up. Mm. And, you know, that's why I, you know, still at the age of fucking whatever, I want to do that. I want to get up. Mm. Do things take uh, its... Did, did things take a a change in perspective at all for you? Like, you've got kids, you've got grown-up kids, you've got different age, you've got a new girlfriend, you've got all these different things. But I'm things a granddad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> One of my children has had a child. Yeah, yeah. Which made me a granddad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, like... I guess they've always, <coughs> they've always lived with you being... I mean, we're talking to somebody now that is... You've literally... You've lived it... Mm. To the point you've come out the other side, been super successful, go down to the White House, get your thing put up in, you know, Obama's main main hallway, and mm. get, you're here and you're on the ground level, yeah. doing it. You've been you've been paid, you've you've gone through all of your life circumstances. Dude, it doesn't matter how much you get paid. There's nothing better. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter how much you get paid. There's nothing better than. Getting into a train yard at like two o'clock in the morning, lying there in a bush whilst clays do some fucking angle grinding on a track, just literally hiding there going, please don't shine your torches, please don't shine your torches. And then they bounce and you're like, dude, we've got 45 minutes and lacing a train. <laughs> and then staying up and catching that train as it runs. And you're like... That's my train. <laughs> That's my train. I don't care whether it says Thames. I might add at this point, I do not incite and encourage this business here. This is coming straight from the uh, legend's mouth here. Dude, do not do this at home. Yeah, that's, that's the ticket. Yeah, dude, honestly, people get arms ripped off and die. Graffiti will kill you. <clears throat> like, you'll go to fucking prison. Yeah. You'll get nicked, you'll go to prison, you'll do time, or you'll die. Yeah. You might as well be serving up fucking brown or white. Yeah. But yeah, graffiti's more fun than serving up that shit. Yeah, yeah. For sure. At least we got some photos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you can't say you didn't do anything with your life, you know. Yeah. I mean, what's it, what's it feel like, Ian, to be like in a situation where you've got the... Well, you've always had the freedom. And I think you've always been calculated and very, very articulate with how you've put yourself across and the perception of you versus the art you put out. Uh, I think that's it's your career path. It's been very well constructed. How's it feel like now to be in this situation where around here we've got nothing but high end fucking art, full stop, but yet you've still got the drive and ambition and the want and desire to still be on the ground doing it raw 
painting with your peers and it, as if like it was, how does it feel? How does it feel to have come up the other side and, and be as prevalent on all angles? Dude, I still have this dream that I'm gonna like, I'm gonna go Gloucesters on an early. <laughs> and my circle line train is gonna roll with my fucking name on it. Mm -hmm. Like, all of this shit is nonsense. But people love it. Yeah, but I don't fucking... Dude, people love Weetabix. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, people love Chorizos. Yeah, 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 true. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Like, they, uh, like yeah, yeah. You, you, you can't, you can't <laughs> gauge, mm. like, what I do by what people love and like. Mm. like you're serving, essentially. You're, you're like, you're, you're shotting. Aren't you? You're, you're yeah. dealing in, you, you're churning them out. Dude, I've got, it. fuck, you know, I've got to make pays, haven't I? Yeah. i got fucking mouse to feed and mortgage yeah. to pay for and nonsense and, you know, pay for Gary's fucking blunt mattress. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's like... <laughs> but, like, the in all honesty, it's like graffiti is like, there's nothing realer. Mm. Like, no, I'm, no, I'm telling you, I agree I'm without question. Dude, I listen to your shit, right? I listen to your podcast, and every little kid goes... Uh, my mum was a crackhead, my dad was a heroin addict, my dad was an alcoholic. I met a family through graffiti yeah. when I was 13 and these people brought me up Truth. and taught me how to live. Live, yeah. Yeah. Saves fucking lives, man. Yeah. Without question. Yeah. I'm, and I'm always aghast. I feel like if anybody was from outside looking in, authority or otherwise, and had any shadow of doubt about what the, the, the art form was about, it, it's, it's that. Dude, it's a family. Yeah. It's a family structure. Yeah. You look at how DDS worked out. You yeah. got Sub, you got Shu. They were the fucking granddads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you got Teach and fucking Fume. They were the fucking parents. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you got all these little kids. And then AC and Cos and all yeah, those yeah. people started. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's like, mad. it's a family thing mm. that no one had mm. because their families weren't families mm. and they rejected them. Graffiti, and it, you know, it, you know, it learned me how to live. Mm-mm-mm. Do you feel like you came from a, a hard background like that? No, I really? came from a... Basically, my dad was a yeah. lord and my mum was a lady. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> no, hold on. We have done a podcast before. I don't remember that bit. <laughs> I was like, hang on a minute. Uh, yeah, no, no. I, basically, I'm in the House of Lords every other weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what well, they like the... you to believe, don't they? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they think. They think Ein's like... All Very out. conservative. Yeah. <laughs> um, but... It, it gives people something, don't it? It gives people that No, idea. it doesn't give people something. It... It gives people... No, it, it doesn't give people something. There are people that need something. Mm. And there's a structure that, that kind of does something for them. Mm. I'm not saying it's the best structure, because basically you just go out robbing, stealing and doing graffiti. That's not the best family structure. Yeah. But it gives them a, a Direction. support system and a, a defence system. Because, <sighs> like, you know, like your mum, your dad, they would have your back. And if you ain't got a mum or your dad, then you've got DDS. Mm -hmm. And they got your back. Mm -hmm. And if you got DDS, no one's fucking with you. Yeah, hundred, hundred percent. Yeah, and now you're part of the gang. You're mm -hmm. part of the crew. Yeah. And you roll. Mm -hmm. And you do stuff. And that's not necessarily the best way to go. Because mm -hmm. you're gonna wind up in prison. Yeah. That that that's a, a, a to merit like. One thing I've noticed on the podcast, and it's easy we can talk about this because you know you're one of the first people that came on the show, yeah. like early doors, um, before it was even an arm of the show. Um, as I've as I've 
gone through the journey of writers and to sit with you nearly two years later, one thing I have discovered is, is the right to passage with going to jail. It seems to be like, if you haven't done it, then people one day, well, have you done enough? You know what I mean? I've never been to jail. You've never been to jail? I've never been to jail. I am s- what? super clever. I've never been to prison. Never been to prison? Never been to prison. But you're, but you're tatted up. People know you, who you are. Dude, I don't wear balaclavas. Well, I once. <laughs> really? Yeah. Is it the obvious? Is it being blatant that it, that kind of allows for that passing of, eh, no, one's, no one cares? Uh, I just think I was super lucky yeah. that I changed things at a certain time. Like, there was a time when I was doing, like, bear trains and fucking nonsense. Yeah, we're talking in retrospect now, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, at this point. Dude, I do not give a fuck. <laughs> Dude, okay, right. So, just for the record... British Transport Police graffiti squad came round my house the other day. I didn't answer the door because I never answered my door. Then they sent me a letter inviting me to have an interview because they'd found a balaclava with my DNA in it in the train yard. Right. So I went to the interview and they were like, yeah, yeah. I was like, show me the photos. So I phoned up all my mates. I was like, dude, what will we do then? And no one could remember because no one takes photos. So I was like, all right, sweet, show me the photos. And it was this fucking shit piece by... Right. And I was like, that's not me. <laughs> Chatted to BTP. And so they've, they, they've just dropped the charges. How long were the charges up for? Like a year. Right, OK. But we're still painting. Yeah. So, get your fucking, uh, the DNA wipe swipes. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure you wipe everything. And doesn't, and don't anything phase you? Doesn't the thought of any of that sort of thing phase you? Like, going, in, going into the pen, does that not... Do you feel like, don't you feel like, well, like, you know, I've, I'm, I'm pushing my luck here. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, hey, I'm 50, I ain't, nothing's happened yet. Um, doesn't, doesn't it, oh, don't... Is there any overthinking at all? No. Why? Okay, so graffiti writers do not think I might get nicked. A bit closer with the mic there, okay. Yeah. So graffiti writers do not think I might get nicked. They think we're getting away with this. Mm. Mm. And then if you do get nicked, then you're like, well, well, basically, my, my, my personal opinion is if I did get sent to prison... I'd read a few good books. Yeah. And they let me out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've always found... And it's, dude, it's fucking graffiti. You know what graffiti is, right? You change the colour of something. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Dude, all you do is change the colour of something. Mm. Yeah. And for some <laughs> reason... <laughs> For yeah. some reason, somebody hates it so badly that they want to send people to prison for changing the colour of something. And again, like I was saying, it's like a rite of passage. I don't think people give it that much. I think people are surprised about the amount of time they're spend, spending in jail or worse, spending in jail. I think it's a Dude, place. I know people that spent two, five years in prison wow. for changing the colour of something. That's just not right, is it? It's not right. Dude, there's loads of things that ain't right. Yeah, I oh, know, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, is this is the first is... world problem here. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But still, it's, it's, it's madness when you really put it down onto, into, onto paper, like what, what you're getting yourself into trouble for and what they're penalising you on. Like, I appreciate the fact that we maybe we've caused like a million pounds worth of damage, but... Is it really damage? Like, all right, like Tox and like Cut and like what they did, right? Why not just leave it there? Mm. If you left it there, someone would paint over it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So it's actually not what you damage. Say. Yeah. It's only damage if you want to get rid of it. It's only damage if you hate it. Mm. Mm. Just leave it there. Someone paint over it. Yeah. You don't have to clean it off. Someone eggs will come along and paint, mm -hmm. you know, these stupid fucking egg things over the top of it. And then it's gone. And tox don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. It's only damage if you clean it off. Yeah. Dude. Looking on the outside in. Wow. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But again, going back to what I was saying. Actually, let me just stick on this. So, millions of pounds worth of damage. But the stuff you're shot in now in terms of art, they, that's become a, 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 an artistic... Uh, it, it's part of English, British, London... Uh, it's the aesthetic of London. It's, and I can't help but feel that the money that's been, that, that maybe not so much tourism, but just being, that being present as being a, yep, yeah, that's, that's London because that's that, so that's that sign. That's that. That's that iron piece. That yeah. that that's worth some money. You've probably put money back, more money back in than you've than you've damaged. Yeah. Well, when you think about it, okay, so it's. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? You've probably put more money in to, to to the economy, the art economy, in the long term than any bit of damage that's been done anywhere else. Surely. I got this amazing lawyer. His name's Alex Wright. Uh, and we were having this conversation the other day about the money that I've made, like Shoreditch back in the days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was a shithole. It was, yeah. I lived there for a bit. It was nice. Yeah. yeah. Dude, just buying brown down Red Church Street yeah. and fucking prostitutes. And the only reason we lived there was because Hackney Council had was the cheapest power mm. and they couldn't afford to clean graffiti off. Mm. So we'd paint and it would stay there. And as a graffiti writer, you want to paint and you want to see your stuff. You don't want to see it get buffed the next day. So we painted around there and now... It's fucking trendy as fuck. Dude, there's street art tours, there's coffee shops, there's fixed world. Yeah. You know, it's nonsense. But it's like, there is an argument that, you know, maybe without what we did, Shoreditch wouldn't be the exciting street art hub that it is now. Without question. Without question. Without... <laughs> so <laughs> maybe I should get on the phone and fucking... I could get my lawyer, Alex Wright. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what law firm works for. Anyway, maybe I should get my lawyer to send an email to Hackney Council and say we want some money. Well, but, but you know, I mean, I'm not being funny, but like, you've had a few altercations with different brands, with fucking Mercedes driving past one yeah. of the big signs, and you're just like, hang on a minute, no, that's, that's mine. Yeah. Like, you've had those encounters, haven't you? So there's this thing called intellectual property rights and as an artist you paint something and that, even if you don't copyright it, it's still your artwork and then if somebody comes along and does an Audi commercial or Porsche commercial in front of it, they need to ask your permission, pay some money or not and then you sue them. Has that not been challenged recently with Banksy, though? Wasn't there a card company or something that, that printed a Banksy so that it went to court or something? No, I can't remember. And so they, they lost or something. Was that something? Or I'm I not exactly wrong? sure of what happened, <clears throat> but because Banksy is, like, anonymous and no one knows who he is. Uh, okay. So there was, like, Clinton Cards did a Banksy thing. That's the one. And they said, because you're not actually producing artwork mm. in the commercial scope, mm. and that's why you opened that shop in Croydon. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that's why you opened a shop in Croydon to sell things that you can't actually buy. Okay. To fight cleaning cards. <laughs> fight he's, fire with fire. He's not as stupid as he looks. <laughs> Hell no. And trust me, he does look. He looks like Gandalf. <laughs> really? 
Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he's got really long grey hair <laughs> and a pointy hat. I remember him from back in the day. He, I did a, uh, I did a, an event once and he was, this was around Bristol Massive time. It was before the, the whole Banksy phenomenon. Mm. And I remember meeting him at Scala in King's Cross. And people always say to me, what did he look like? I was like, I don't know now. He doesn't look anything like how he looked then. Dude, he's had so much cosmetic surgery. Really? <laughs> never really. <laughs> he yeah. looks like Katie Price now. <laughs> really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. So you'll never recognise him, people, yeah. if you try. Dude, if you thought you knew Banksy, now <laughs> look at Katie Price. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, bless, man. I mean, it, he's... And you, both of you, and, and a handful of others, allow this debate to rage on about street art versus graph and what it does. And this is a fucking topic that always comes into play here. I feel like um, maybe you could elaborate a lot more on... Because it is, it's a, it's a conversation. It's a conversation to have. And without it, you know... Oh, God, I fucking slept on my sofa last night and my fucking neck is aching. So I've got my <laughs> daughter staying with me. <laughs> there you go. Yes, yeah, so I've got my daughter staying with me. She's 25. Yeah. She's a teacher in Kuwait. She came back for 10 days. Two months later. Still with you? Still living in my bed whilst I sleep on my sofa. See, and you're so rock star as you think, you see. Yeah, it's a fucking <laughs> nightmare. And you know, anyway, I mean, compared to bushes, you know, laying out waiting for trackies to go. Okay, right, so. Yes, come on. So, graffiti versus street art. Kind of. So, if you get arrested, it's criminal damage. If you don't get arrested... It's art. It's art. Simple as that. Dude, I love fucking shit up. Mm. But I also need to make money. Mm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, luckily I've got myself in a position where... You know, we can paint shit, we can sell shit. The, 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 the pieces that are on the wall at the moment, ironically, says, I'm so happy, very, very happy. And it's just repeated across the whole wall. Dude, I wish they said I don't like this anymore, because I'd be <laughs> much more fucking relevant. <laughs> I literally, I'm so sick and tired of what I'm doing. Uh, things move on and things change. I want to get into the conversation, if you don't mind, about uh, your recovery that uh -huh. went on. Uh, the start of the year, maybe towards the end of the year, actually, wasn't it? This is where it came to light. For those of you who don't know, um, you, you know, I had been suffering with a very heavy um, drug ad addiction and i will be fucked if I knew about it, but, but then... I'm going to have a piss. Yeah. Yeah, pause this. There we go, right. Hello. Hi, yeah. We're back. Return. Freshened up. Yes. Uh, talk to me about the, uh, that time, the period in which led up to um, uh, you moving into recovery and, and uh, yeah, getting off the brown. So, God, it was be like 25 years ago and I was living in East London and East London was dark. Sorry, East London was dark. Yeah. And West London was white. Mm -hmm. And I was just like drawn towards that like dark side, you know, mm -hmm. like the music that I was listening to. What were you listening to at the time? What was that? You know, give, give us, a, give us a, 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 a visual of what, what was going on at that time. What you were listening to, etc. Like we were well into like Beastie Boys, but also, you know, Velvet Underground, The Doors, just like, yeah. you know, like, yeah, and it's like weird, dark shit. And I was always fascinated by heroin. And uh, this girl that I knew was like, oh, you want to try some? And I was like, yeah, okay, sweet. And I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. And I was always like a drinker. Yeah. So I'd always like drunk. And I just basically discovered heroin. And I basically took me 12 years. It's mad. Wow. To get off of it. And then I got off of it, and I didn't do it for like five odd years. And then I had this altercation at the Serpentine, 
And yeah. shit went to hell, and it was like the first lockdown, and I was just like, you know what? What happened at the Serpentine? Uh, That's the venue in East London, isn't it? Uh, Serpentine was in, it's in West London, it's okay. a gallery. There you go. Oh, okay, uh, okay. So, yeah, so I okay. had, like, some alteration there. Yeah. And literally everything went to shit, and I was just like, you know what, I'm going to get back on the ground. Really? And I did it for two and a half years, £100 a day, smoking heroin, and... On the 19th of October, or you know, a couple of days before, I was down at my mum's house with my girlfriend and my brother and my brother's kids, and I'm smoking heroin in my fucking brother's toilet. And my girlfriend was like, oh, you stay at my house? And I was like, you know, you have to smoke heroin like every 12 hours, the minimum, or you're gonna get ill. And I did like my last little boot and I was like, I know I'm going to get ill. And my girlfriend lived in uh, Ramsgate. And I got on the train. I was being sick in the train. I had fucking diarrhea. And I had her in my studio. And I got trained to London Bridge. Got a taxi. And I was sitting on my toilet, smoking heroin, being sick with diarrhea, thinking... I ain't doing this anymore. Mm. And I had methadone, so I did like a fucking three-day clock on methadone, and I've never done it since. Talk to me about the talk to me about that three-day period. Uh, you hear stories about it from like those the rock and roll greats of how much fucking hell it was. How how did how did what what did you go through? Uh like with methadone on a three-day clock, it's not that bad because I travelled so much. And I was on heroin for, s s like, so, so long, many years. Yeah. I would always... I'd get, like, a little bottle of fucking... Uh, what's that mouthwash shit? Uh, uh, Listerine? Yeah, Listerine or a bottle of, like, uh, cough medicine. Yeah. So I'd pour the cough medicine out and I'd fill it up with methadone. Right. So I'd have, like, three days of methadone. I remember getting stopped at Dubai... Like where they send you in prison for like a yeah, 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 like yeah. a bit of weed, yeah. and because I got tattoos, this dude was like, "Come here, come here, come here." So I was in Dubai Airport going in, and they pulled me aside, and they literally went through every pocket, every sock, turned out my suitcase, wow. and I'm like, "What's this?" And I'm like, "It's cough medicine. I've got a cough," and I was like. Dude, I'm going to prison. Oh, God. And then this bird turned up and was like, what's this? And I was like, it's cough medicine. And she was like, yeah, it's fine. And, like, got into Dubai. But, yeah, I've stuck shit on my bum. Yeah. You know, I've been to, I went to Japan years ago. And I was like, dude, I'm there for, like, two weeks, ten days. So I stuck, like, fucking, you know, fucking 500 pounds worth of heroin up my bum. Went to Japan, and then, as I'm about to fly back from Japan, a volcano erupts in Iceland. I know this one. <laughs> I, was stuck, I, was, I was stuck in Shanghai. Yeah. <laughs> we went too and far. Like, I remember this. And I'm like, dude, I'm stuck in Tokyo, and I've just smoked my last bit of gear. Oh, no. <laughs> and I, I've got Subutex, and I hated Subutex. What's just, Subutex? Subutex is like a methadone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <gasps> And I'm like, dude, I've got subtext, but I hate subtext. So I literally spent a week in the hotel room just being violently ill with diarrhea. And then the moment I get back to London, I'm phoning up my man. Okay. I'm like, right. dude, hook me up. Yeah, like addiction is like... Is that the only symptom then? So diarrhea is like the, the first, that's the prominent response to you like trying to come off it or being delayed in getting the next fix is there anything else that's like it gets to a point right like with heroin addiction like I, I honestly think heroin is the only physical addiction like people like people like yeah I'm addicted to cocaine it's like no you're not like try smoking brown yeah or nicotine 
the same with similar sort of thing? Dude, nicotine's the, the one thing I can't stop smoking. Yeah. Dude, like alcohol, like I could stop smoke, uh, stop drinking for like a week or whatever. But it's like heroin is like a physical really addiction. Like, like hits you physically to the point where your it body's goes, shutting yeah, you down. No, no, it goes to a point where you only smoke it to not get ill. Wow, so you're like, chasing the fucker. Yeah, like, it doesn't even make you high anymore. Like, I, I speak to friends of mine, and they're like, really? You've smoked it for the last two and a half years? I was like, yeah. And they're like, I've never known. Like, they're like, I know when you're pissed, but it's like, I'd never known. And it's like, it goes to a point where, you're like, you're only doing it to not get ill. Mm. Like, I've had, like, so many friends. Like, heroin is so hard to fucking kick. And I've had so many friends of mine that have, like, OD'd. And I'm like, you didn't OD, you killed yourself. Yo, that's, you uh, that's revelationary, actually, now you come to say that. Because, like you say, if you're not... It, you're, you're only feeding the machine. Yeah. So if you really want to kill yourself, you OD. You don't want to kill yourself. You're just sick and tired... Of that, the chase of the of just just feeding, not getting ill, and you can't give up, mm. and you just think, you know, fuck it, dude. I bought fucking like the first lockdown. I bought syringes, and I was like, dude, I'm just gonna fucking yeah, just do myself in. Really, because you knew that this was gonna be too much. Yeah, because it's hard. It's so hard. And then, you know, and this is why I'm talking to you about this. It's like, you know, you know, there is a way out of it, but not everyone gets out of it alive. Yeah. Because those are the stories you hear. How many people do you think, on average, you got friends that still do it? Yeah, yeah. And they function like you function? I mean, you, for turnaround, you've been so, you've always been busy. Like, mm. you were functioning at the hardest of times. Yeah. To say that it was £100 a, a day, yeah, no wonder you were working like the clappers. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I had a reason to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know it's weird, man. It's like, you know, being a junkie is hard work. Yeah. And it's not healthy. You know, I was, you know, I never robbed, I never stole shit. You know, I went to work, you know, I made money, I paid my people, I got my shit. Uh, but yeah, if, like, and I was super lucky, super fortunate. Like, if you're not in my position, then you're fucking robbing, in stabbing. Floor, yeah. yeah, like breaking car windows. And getting nicked all the time. Did that ever cross your mind, though? Was there any other... Was there lulls in... I mean, we're talking about over the, this, such a long period. Yeah. There must have been moments where you thought, ah, oh, you know what? You know, you've got kids, you've got grandkids, you've got girlfriends, you've got overheads, you've got all these different things. To have a habit on top, surely... Was there ever a time where you're like, yeah, I've, I'm going to have to do something pretty severe here because I'm really hitting a... hitting a moment. I remember one time where I was like... It was like Christmas, and I was with kids, and I was like, I'm giving up, I'm giving up. And I was like two days into a clock without methadone, <gasps> and I was just like... Without it? Fuck. Yeah. Hell. And I was like... And I just got, literally just got in the car and drove up to London and scored. Really? And I remember scoring in fucking Murray Grove... And then going to the Hoxton Hotel. The Hoxton Hotel used to have a disabled toilet. And I used to stay there a lot. So I could walk in the Hoxton Hotel, walk into the disabled toilet, tinfoil, and had a boot. And I was just like, everything is fine now. I didn't give a fuck about my kids. What's the rush like when you come back from something that's two days away? Like you say, no meth. You would just straight in, back in, and in a random location. Did... did, did 
you know, is that, is that leave you volatile? Like, are you in a public no, place? No, no, it's not a rush. It just brings you back to normality. Right. Because you hear these stories, you know, you know, the Sid and Nancy stories of how much of a fucking rush it was, and it's still not like that. No, it just brings you back to normality. Yeah. Like, it really does. It just brings you back, and you're like, oh, now I'm calm. Now I'm okay. And the anxiety and the stress before you get that is like, it drives you insane. That's the clocking. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you get out of it then? Like three days of, I mean, it never ends, does it? The, 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 the rehabilitation of something like this is it's a daily thing, right? Like what, what at its worst, like, is it the first three days? Is it the weeks ahead? Is it... I just got fucking bored of it. Like, I'd literally been doing it for, like, fucking, you know, 15 years on and off. And I was literally just so bored of being tied down by something. Mm. And, you know, I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried. And it never worked. And it just got to a point where I'm like, you know what, fuck this. I'm, dude, I bought syringes. I bought mad pills. I'd fucking eaten so many pills that I woke up, like, lying on my floor. And like, every time I woke up, I was like, why am I not dead? And I was just like, when you get to that point, you're like, what the fuck? Anyway. Was it? Yeah, it's mad. Yeah. Is there any other, like, telltale signs of things that... Actually, no, let's... Actually, moving on. What, what were the benefits? What were the things that you suddenly clocked in yourself where you were like, oh, fucking hell, like, I forgot about this. This is cool. Is there anything that... That you denied yourself because of the drug habit? Is there anything that sprang out of, you know... That was like, yeah, that's that. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's fucking cool. I'm. <clears throat> I don't think I would be here now if it wasn't for all the things that I've done. Mm. Like, I honestly, like, I don't think if I didn't have a smackhead fucking for years, then I wouldn't be sitting here now. So it was a life lesson. It was a. It was a journey. Dude, it was an amazing journey. Yeah. Like, I literally, I wouldn't change it, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't advise it. Yeah. What do, you, what do your kids say? To know that you Dude, come at the I'm, other side. Like, I'm so honest with my children. Mm. So I've got, like, seven kids. Mm. And, like, my youngest is, like, seven. She's, like, in California. And, like, my oldest three. I'm, like, so honest with them. Mm. Because I want my children to go to me, Dad, I got fucking smack out of it. And I'll be like, dude, I can fucking fix this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Or they're just going to smoke brown in their fucking bedroom. And I'll be like, why is all this tinfoil disappearing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm so honest with my kids. Mm. I'm like, dude, this is what I've done. I've fucked shit up. Uh, but yeah, if you ever get into a problem, I'm the person to phone. Yeah, because you've you've saved some fucking lives in the journey as well, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. Tell the story because just before we came on, you you mentioned about somebody that literally came round to yours and asked for the the meth that you you'd said that you would. Yeah. So okay. So uh, in the first lockdown, I posted this picture on Instagram uh, with like some brown and some fucking whatever, whatever. And and I was like, I'm doing, I'm doing this now. I'm doing this. I'm not fucking doing this anymore. I'm not kicking this. And load of people trolled the fuck out of me, called me a cunt, and you're fucking worthless and blah blah blah. And a few people said, Oh my god, I can't believe you've been so honest. Uh. Please, I'm going through this struggle with my boyfriend. And I'm like, dude, here's my telephone number. 
I've got methadone. It will help your boyfriend through the clock. And her boyfriend is now clean. So fuck 100 haters. One person did good. Yeah. Fuck right. Yeah. Fuck them. Fuck them. Dude, fucking lockdown. Bored the fuck out of everybody yeah. and made them hate. Yeah. Sit there trolling and... Yeah. You can't deny the strength that that took from you to have... <clears throat> have gone through so much. <clears throat> Arguably, all the things that went on prior to this, the altercation that you mentioned, I don't know mm. much about it, but um, all of these things... What transpires is you had an addiction. You were going through some shit. And what, what I find interesting about people with opinions, when people really do go through shit, like you take things for what they are and, and just try and, 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 try and find the, the, the resolution in your head and, and compassion to, to appreciate that if someone's going through something, don't be a cunt, <laughs> basically. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, what, you're going to kick a tramp? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to laugh at a fat person running yeah. on a running machine? Yeah. It's like, these are people trying to do something. Yeah. So, yeah, addiction is a disease yeah. that affects everybody. Yeah. Race, gender, like, addiction does not. Yeah. Yeah. And and there is a way out of it. Well, the basic there's two ways out of it. You die or you get better. Yeah. And I would rather help people not die. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. And how is it today? How's the current state of affairs? How are you feeling? Well, I'm sleeping on a sofa in my flat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> my daughter's in my bed. I've got Gary in my studio. <laughs> kind of business as usual, really. It's just, Dude, just mine's a hundred pound in the pocket a day. Yeah, and we're out painting shows. So <laughs> <laughs> what could possibly be worse? <laughs> Dude, I mean, like you're saying that you spent hundred quid a, a day. Like, like you must be doing all right now. Like you, like you got to have some money in the in the pocket now after I worked, hundred quid a trust day. Me, I worked hard when I was a smackhead. Yeah, did really? Yeah. Well, that's to be that's to be credited. Like you know you. If I, then nowadays, I guess you 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 bet. Well, you're in a more healthier place, but you know you can um, sit back a little bit more and do things that you want to do. The fun things. Dude, I've done nothing. <laughs> I've literally done nothing since I gave up heroin on the nineteenth of October. I've done nothing since then. I I can you know that, that's not true. If you go down on Kent Road, <laughs> <laughs> it paints a very different picture. <laughs> Yeah, BTP might ask me a question, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To coin a phrase, paint yeah. a different picture. Um, what's the future for the Iron Man? It's crazy. I can't even put everything you've done into one podcast. We've done two now. And, and an exhibition. What happened to the exhibition? We did an exhibition on, on the mini doc. I think that was the only documented thing. Have you ever... <laughs> it's like the wood, that the, the tree that falls in the woods, does it ever get yeah. Like, dude, like, well, tell us about that exhibition. Because, oh, Jesus, like, just before the first lockdown, you would go on, explain. So, dude. yeah, so we did a thing. So I work with... I did loads of shit for charity, right? Big Issue was the one, wasn't it? So we did a Big Issue show with Jealous Gallus... Uh, gallery, uh, and we had, I think we had 96 artists, and all the money raised went to the big issue. So we were trying to get big issue salesmen's uh, square cards, because no one has cash mm -hmm. anymore. So we were trying to get big issue salesmen square cards so they could take credit card payments for their fucking magazines, blah, 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 blah. Which is uh, brilliant. What a fucking great idea. So we did this thing and we edited the entire magazine. We redesigned the cover. We did the covers. We did prints. And we raised them like, yeah, shitload of money. Hmm. Which I think as an artist or as somebody 
as somebody in a position, that's your responsibility to do. Mm, yeah, for sure. Mac. I agree. Dude, I've got this place, I've got a flat. Like, I don't actually need money. Mm. Like, I don't drive a car, I've got a pedal bike, stolen an electric scooter. Like, I don't actually need money. <laughs> so it's like, why not use my position to help people? Yeah. When I went into that place, and I, it, fuck me, man, it was the creme of the creme of graph writing, street art, like every, everything was represented in there. Like, you had Obey, you had um, One Dude, Up. Dude, we had fucking One Up. We Crazy. had fucking Teach. Yeah. We had Zonk. We had people you've never heard of. Yeah. We had all Fashion, over Dr. Nocky was in Dr. Nocky. Yeah, we had like, yeah, 96 artists, I think, so. I felt like so lucky, but at the same time, a little bit, Oh, shit. Because although we got in there and did it, it was literally on the day, on it? The following day, it was like lockdown. It was like, yeah, lockdown. And then, and now when I look at it, I'm like, yeah, I don't think that, that exhibition is, there's nothing going to be like that really to that magnitude again for that reason. It's still there. Is it still there now? <laughs> I'm joking. I was going to say, yeah, it's still locked up. <laughs> it's going to go down there. <laughs> it's been locked up for a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You must be surprised, actually, on that very subject. You must be surprised about how how long your uh, uh, your pieces stay up, but particularly in Shoreditch and places like that. I mean, I know that you know it's all subject. To, you know, I'm sure you get enough um, l hate as much as love, but the majority of the stuff that I see, I'm like, dude, that's still up. Like the the, the symbols and the, the the lettering is still up. Some of them have been there for a while, huh? I got this thing where. I don't want to paint over a wall that somebody's painted over. Yeah. So I want to paint a fresh wall. And I think if you paint over a fresh wall... Dude, it's like graffiti. Like, you do a tag, right? And it's okay to do a throw up over your tag. Mm. And then it's okay to do a piece over your fucking throw up. But if you do a piece and somebody does a throw up over it, that's not okay. Mm. Your, your career has has f thus far been so colourful and full of these crazy journeys. And it will continue to be colourful. Yes. <laughs> Fair bloody do. <laughs> Dude, otherwise we're going to fucking... <laughs> it's your crutch. It's the thing you do. You like to do it. It's put, kept you on track. It's saved your life. It's done everything that it said it on, on the tin it would do and, it's, and you're happy with it. Dude, I like... like... Like, my mum's like, like, she worries about me. My mum used to say to me, worry, 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 that's all I ever do. Not about my brother, about me. Mm. And, like, you know, now, like, my mum's, like, 70-odd and, like, I'm a little bit older. And my mum's like, have you got any regrets? I'm like, I actually don't. Mm. Like, would I go back and change anything? Like, would I change? Maybe I wouldn't have jumped over that fence. Maybe. But yeah, no, I literally don't have any regrets. Like, I love the journey that my life has taken me on. And I look forward to how it's going to take me. And I still do graffiti. I still paint trains. I still roll with my people and I jump on aeroplanes mm -hmm. and meet people and see cultures and learn things that educates me. And I come back and I'm thinking, never vote in Tory again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And on that note, I think you've got the most definitive on on <laughs> podcast conversation. I think that this is in existence, haven't we? Here, this is not that I've ever heard Tory anyway. But... <laughs> <laughs> Just clarify that one. Yeah, exactly. I might have a tattoo, but yeah, I've never heard Tory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a humble character and a, and a and a good friend, my brother Ein. Thank you so much for jumping. And in. my friend Killer Keller. You're my brother. Boom. Always a pleasure. Um, yo, and if you want to check the other podcast from two years ago, you're more than welcome. More insights. And also, yeah, the exhibition that's on a mini dog. You find it on television app as well. Big up the man like Ein. Boom. Stay lucky, people. Kid yeah, stay safe. Yeah. Stay lucky. 
clean your teeth and have more sex. <laughs> In that order. <laughs> I'll never let you down. Stay lucky, people. Peace.